Hello everyone, my name is Sarah and I am the content creator behind the booktube channel, The Bookish Knitter. Today I am coming to you with a really fun video. This is all about author backlists. So, as readers, especially romance readers, there's nothing like finding a book that you love by a new to you author and then discovering that that author has a huge backlist of books that you get to work your way through. So in this video, I'm going to share with you some old favorites of mine, plus some new to me authors and just some of the titles on their backlists that you should definitely check out. So the first author I want to share with you is Rochelle Allers. I found her work a number of years ago and I'm so happy that I did because her stuff is just fantastic. She got her start writing for the Kamani line for Harlequin a number of years ago and she has several series under that line. Most notably, I believe it was her first series, The Eatons, which was a 10 book series featuring around the fa a family called The Eatons. And I definitely think you should check those ones out. The series that I found her was the Wickham Falls Wedding Series. The first book called Home to Wickham Falls is a sibling's best friend story and I absolutely loved it. It is fantastic. There is 10 books in this series and they are all wonderful. Um, book number two in the series is called Claiming the Captain's Baby. Isn't that delightful? And then the sixth book in the series is Dealmaker Heartbreaker, and I just love that cover so, so much. The final book in the series uh, was about a baseball player, and it was called The Winning Season, and it came out last year. To my understanding, this series is now done, but it's definitely one that you need to check out. Another series of hers that I really enjoyed was the Book Club series. There are two books so far in this series, and these edge a little bit more onto the women's fiction slash contemporary romance. This series is about a group of women who meet by chance at this cafe. The first book is called The Seaside Cafe, and they start a book club. But of course, you know, it's more about it's more than just about the books. They help each other with their lives and relationships and family. It's a fabulous, fabulous series, and I absolutely adore it great summertime vibes from this one. And her newest series is called Bainbridge House. The second book in the series comes out later this year and I'm eagerly anticipating it. The first book in the series was absolutely delightful. It was called The New Foundation and I definitely recommend that you check it out. Absolutely wonderful. I love this author so much and she has a huge backlist of works that you can go ahead and enjoy. So for anyone who has been watching my personal booktube channel for any length of time, know that I am a big fangirl of this next author, and that is Heather Graham. I absolutely love pretty much everything that she puts out. And she writes in a plethora of different genres. So she writes a lot of romantic suspense. She has also written historical, uh, and she often dips her toes into paranormal. One of my favorite series by her is a great paranormal series. So the first books I want to share with you are some of her oldies book goodies. Now I haven't necessarily read all of these. However, I just had to show these to you guys. So these are all, the great thing is I do have the original copies. These are all from the 1980s, but you can find these now. They have been reprinted for the Kindle or reprinted as part of the best-selling author collections from Harlequin. So we have King of the Castle by Heather Graham. It takes place in Ireland. Night Moves, which is one of her first books for Harlequin, I believe. Absolutely fantastic. And like I said, these are all part of, uh, these are the Silhouette Into Moments line, which is now known as the Harlequin Romantic Suspense line. So these do have a great suspenseful element to them. This one is called The Game for Love. I mean, <laughs> the covers are so brilliant. I just love a good vintage cover. But the one that I've actually read out of this stack is A Matter of Circumstance. And this one was so 1980s. It really gave me vibes of the movie Overboard with Goldie Hawn and Kurt Russell. There is A Case of Mistaken Identity. There's some amnesia. It was just really great. It takes place in Southern Florida and there's even a mention of Miami Vice. <laughs> it's delightful and you need to check it out. Um, she also writes some more romantic suspense for the Intrigue line. I have this one here called Out of the Darkness, which I believe is the second book in the Finnegan Connection series. This is a series that takes place in New York City, and it's to do with jewel thieves. Um, she has also written for the now no longer available Nocturne line. She wrote a Keeper series, which is very paranormal, deals with vampires. One of my favorites that I've read for that series is an anthology called Christmas in Salem that she wrote with three other authors. And it's essentially holiday stories, but paranormal holiday stories, which are just delightful. 
but I can't talk about Heather Graham without talking about my favorite series by her of all time, which is the Crew of Hunters series. I think it's now up to book 35 or 36, and essentially the Crew of Hunters is a paranormal investigation unit that works with the FBI. So as I always like telling people, think the X-Files, but with ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 less government conspiracy. It's a fabulous series. The first book is called Phantom Evil, but you do not have to read these in order. Each story introduces different characters, different team members. They are delightful. They are steeped in history. Really great kind of a ghost story atmosphere, and I highly recommend that you check this series out and definitely check out Heather Graham's work. The next author I want to share with you is a newer to me author, even though she's been writing for the Harlequin Presents line for a long time, and that is Lynn Graham. I love the Presents line. I never used to, to be completely honest, but I am now really enjoying the appeal of it and can completely understand why everyone seems to love it. This is the series or the line that is synonymous, in my opinion, with Harlequin. If anyone talks about a Harlequin book, if they don't read it, these are the books that they're thinking about. They take place in exotic locations. They have very alpha heroes, great storylines. I am absolutely falling in love with the fantasy aspect element of these books. And Lynn Graham's books do these perfectly. She deals with all different kinds of tropes from Bride of Convenience to Cinderella Bride, um, you know, blackmail stories. She has great alpha heroes. Some of the books in my collection that I have by her, um, this one, Indian Prince's Hidden Sun, is absolutely fantastic. I really, really enjoyed this one, and that cover is just stunning. And then an older work by her is Bride for Real, part of the Vakis Vows series, which is a group of Greek billionaires. So who doesn't love a good billionaire story? And she writes great billionaires, let me tell you. So definitely, definitely check out Lynn Graham. She is fantastic. If you love the Presents line, you're probably already reading her, but I definitely recommend that you delve into her backlist. So when talking about backlist books, I absolutely have to mention the great Brenda Jackson. She has been a favorite of mine for a number of years. She has been writing what feels like forever, and she has such a amazing backlist of books, including a series with 30 books in it <laughs> that you definitely need to check out. The series that I'm talking about is, of course, The Westmorelands, and I have one of them here. It's The Real Thing, and these are great stories. Brenda Jackson's niche, if you will, are wealthy cowboys, essentially, <laughs> and she does them so well. I mean, who can say no to a wealthy cowboy? So these are very uh, wealthy characters, high society, but I love the fact that she throws that cowboy element in there and it really, really works. So definitely check out the Westmoreland series if you get a chance. So she also does a great offshot series of the Westmorelands called the Westmoreland Legacy Series. Now, the Westmoreland series itself is about a group, a family, essentially, a big family called the Westmorelands. And the Legacy Series, I believe, is the next generation. So this book I read a couple of years ago, and it's called His to Claim. And oh my gosh, you guys, this was so good. The reason I love this one so much is because this one was about a couple that was already married, which is something you're starting to see more of lately. But I still really enjoy finding these books because the happily ever after doesn't necessarily end with the I do. So this is about a couple who's been married for a number of years. They have small children. His job takes him away from home quite a bit. And his wife has pretty much said, I'm done. So she leaves and decides to take a break before she makes a big decision. And she goes back to where they spent their honeymoon. So he, of course, follows her out there and it's the rekindling of their romance. And oh, it just made my heart so happy. I highly recommend that you check out Brenda Jackson. But you know what, even though this book is fourth in a series, I definitely think you can jump into it at this point and you will not be missing anything at all. It's a delightful, delightful story. So yeah, definitely check out Brenda Jackson. She has also written a lot of titles for the Cattleman's Club series, which is a long running multi-author series that uh, a new Texas Cattleman's Club book comes out pretty much every year or a new series, excuse me, comes out every year. So definitely check out her books. 
So the next author I want to share with you is a newer to me author. I discovered her work a few years ago, and that is Michelle Major. I discovered her after reading this great trilogy that she wrote for the special edition line called the Maggie and Griffith series, or trilogy, excuse me. The great thing about this one, and I had not seen this done up until this point, is that it was a trilogy of books that follows the same couple. Each story does end in a in a happy for now perhaps type scenario, but definitely the whole trilogy wraps up in a happily ever after. And it was absolutely delightful. I loved taking that love story and expanding on it. I thought it was fantastic. The first book in that series is called Falling for the Wrong Brother, and I highly recommend that you check it out. Another long running series that she has done is called Crimson Colorado. Michelle Major herself is from Colorado, so a lot of her books tend to get set there, which is fantastic. And this Crimson Colorado series is essentially a small town contemporary romance series that you need to check out. So one of the ones that I have here is Always the Brides, or oh, excuse me, Always the Best Man. And this was absolutely fantastic. I love this series so much. I have not been disappointed in any of these books. They've all been amazing. She also writes some books for the Fortunes of Texas series, uh, which is another multi-author series. And usually you see one, uh, a new Fortunes of Texas series come out every year. One of the ones that I have here is the Fortunes of Texas, the Secret Fortunes. And this is a fortune in waiting. And this is book number one in this uh, Fortunes of Texas, the Secret Fortune series. So definitely check this out. Again, it's a multi-author series. So book two would be written by a different author. But I recommend that you read all of them, even though I'm only talking about Michelle Major right now, because these series are just absolutely delightful. But the series that really put Michelle Major into my favorite author category is definitely the Magnolia Sisters series. This is a fabulous um, single title series about three half sisters who didn't even know that they were sisters. The first book is called the Magnolia Sisters. And essentially what happens is, is they're mutual father passes away and they find out in his will that they've been left some property in this small town in South Carolina, along with the fact that, hey, you have two, you have sisters. So they all meet up for the first time. And of course, there's some great bits in this book with the uh, aspect of learning about being sisters and how to become friends with each other. But also each book deals with their romance, each, uh, the romance for each girl individually, excuse me. And they are wonderful, absolutely wonderful. She's now also done a spin-off series called The Carolina Girls, which I recommend that you check out as well. Uh, I read the first book, Wildflower Season, and it was amazing, and I'm looking forward to the rest. So yeah, definitely check out Michelle Major. So the last author that I want to share with you is Linda Warren. She is an author that I have been reading for a long time. She is one of the first authors that I discovered way back when I started reading Category Romance, what feels like a million years ago. And I always hunted out her books, and I still am to this day. If I see her name on a book, I know I'm going to get a great read. So yes, she still is publishing books today. Um, I first discovered her with this little six book series written by various authors called Texas Hold'em. Series takes place in Texas. The book that she wrote is called Texas Bluff. I believe it's fifth in the series. And essentially the premise of the series is about six friends who are play poker every week and each of them individually falling in love. And it's delightful. Um, another series that she wrote and she's written quite a bit for or had written quite a bit for the super romance line is this one is called The Right Woman. And then she has another book called The Wrong Woman and they're part of the same series. So I'm pretty sure it's about a set of twins. It's been a number of years since I've read this book, but I do know that her writing is fantastic. Um, she also writes another series called Willow Creek, Texas, which has three books in the series. I have the third one right here called A Texas Child. Absolutely delightful, again, for the Super Romance line, which is no longer being published, sadly. The Super Romance line was an absolute favorite of mine. And speaking about imprints that are no longer around, but ones that I absolutely loved, the Harlequin American Romance line. She wrote a lot of books for this line. This later became the Western Romance line. And this book in my hand called uh, Egan is part of the Texas Rebel series. And the great thing is, is that this series is still being written, even though the American Romance line is no more. It's now being written under the Harlequin Heartwarming banner. And the newest book is called A Christmas Proposal. And it looks absolutely delightful. I love the heartwarming line. It really does encompass all of the things I feel like I loved from the Super Romance line, 
where you get a slightly longer book, more secondary characters, a lot of the American slash Western romance line where you get a lot of books involving small towns, cowboys, things like that. Definitely check out this this line and her books for sure. Um, I am really looking forward to reading this one this Christmas. So anyway, guys, that is all that I have for this video today. I do hope that you enjoyed it. Please let me know in the comments below. Are any of these authors your favorites? Do you have any books from them that you have read that I did not mention that you want other people to check out? So please list those below. And be sure to follow Harlequin on all social media, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and TikTok. And until my next video, everybody, take care and happy reading. Thank you all so much for watching. Bye, guys.